Dying Light has a variety of different zombies and mutants, ranging from simple infected humans to gigantic monsters. Today we'll be not only discussing their weak spots, but also the lore and secret facts related to these enemies. The first and most basic types are the Biters. Before the epidemic, there were normal everyday life people that got infected during the first few days of the outbreak. A total of four types of biters exist. The first one are the grey or weak zombies. They are the weakest enemy in the entire game. They usually have no second arm, which means that it's impossible for them to grab you. In addition to their missing arm, they also have way less clothes that consists mostly of sleeveless shirts and shorts. Also, because of how easy they are, you get reduced XP for defeating pale zombies, only around 50 per kill. The further you progress in the story, the less grey biters will appear. After reaching level 12, these zombies will completely disappear and never respawn again. The second type are the regular biters. This is the most common enemy type. You can find them pretty much everywhere around the city. Compared to the grey biters, they have more variety regarding the clothing. Unlike the previous type, they can easily grab you and obviously have more health. These zombies also come in two sub-variants, which are the toxic and fire biters. They are immune to their own elemental damage and apply this effect once you get too close to them. The fire zombies can also light spilled gas canisters that are located on the ground, which can help you get rid of other threats. You also receive 125 XP for defeating these zombies. The following type is not all that different from the previous. Actually, the only difference is that they have a bit more health, and in addition to jaws and hands, they can wield melee weapons. The fourth and final type of biters in the base game aren't all that different from regular biters visually. But they can be pretty tough in groups, because they have bigger health and damage. Most of the time they'll be wearing military uniforms and big leather jackets. You also receive 400 XP for defeating one, which makes them a good target for farming. There isn't any definitive strategy to defeating lots of biters because they are very weak, but one of my favorite strategies will be to utilize the stomp skill while being on top of a car in order to one-shot them and get a decent amount of XP from doing this. Or there is an alternative method to throw a firecracker into a spilled gas canister or a burning car and watch the zombies burn one by one. There is also another subcategory available for every biter, which is named Nightwalkers. They are undistinguishable from regular biters, but once you get close to them during nighttime, they will alert nearby volatiles and mutate into a viral. The virals or infected are also another type of residents of Haran that have been infected by a biter. But unlike the biters, the virus were infected a couple hours or days ago, which means they have retained some human traits, which makes them a quite difficult enemy. Not only they can cry for help once you take a successful hint on them, but also infected have the ability to run, climb and even dodge attacks. Although the most problematic trait of these enemies is that they spawn all the time. Normally, once you make a noise, a couple of virus will spawn nearby, which makes them quite annoying because anything like breaking roofs, explosions and gunshots make noise. This is also the reason why firearms are the worst weapon to use against them, because every time you shoot, even more virus will spawn, which creates an infinite loop. Moreover, on higher levels of difficulty, such as Nightmare, infected spawn even when you're not making any noise. Actually, if you stand still, they will still spawn. Which can be very annoying if you forgot to pause your game, for example. Yet another biter-like enemy is the gas tank. 
As you understand from the name, this type of zombie has an oxygen tank on his back that is connected to his hazmat suit. People like them were supposed to clear the infection, but the zombies managed to bite through the suit and infect the cleaners. They are quite rare and act like regular biters, but once you damage their oxygen tank, they will start flying and eventually explode. Their movement while flying around is very random and unpredictable, but if they explode near an enemy, they will deal big damage. Just make sure the explosion doesn't hit you, and beware of the virals that will be attracted by the noise. Another similar zombie is the bomber. As you understood from the name, it is an exploding infected once more. But the difference is that once it has noticed you, it will quickly run towards you and then stop, after which his organs will slowly increase in size before eventually popping like a balloon. Obviously, the explosion also damages nearby enemies, so it can help clear big patches of biters. Another important feature is that the bomber has no health whatsoever, so any type from any source will immediately kill him. Which makes not only ranged weapons like throwing knives and bows a very good choice for defeating this enemy, but also the grappling hook, firecracker and even the flashlight. I'm not kidding. But the suicider will always try and take the player by surprise, because he is not marked on your minimap and you can't even detect him while using your survival sensibility, so make sure to check all your surroundings very carefully. The next enemy are the frogs. These are arguably the most annoying enemies in Dying Light, because they use only ranged attacks and are usually positioned on hard to reach locations from which they can infinitely spit at you. Unlike other enemies, you wouldn't encounter these by themselves, and normally you have to make a choice, either you go for the ranged attacker first and then clear the area, or try and defeat all the melee attackers bombed by poisonous liquid. I recommend the very first strategy. It is important to note that even if the projectile misses you, it can still hit you because it acts like a small bomb that explodes upon hitting the ground. The last and rarest humanoid enemy are the Screamers. These are infected children and they can be found only in certain areas of Sector Zero and in the following DLC. They will try and lure the player in by making baby crying noises, but once you get in their field of view, they will start screaming. This scream will not only attract the infected, but also damage nearby players really quickly and not allow them to use any weapons, so once you see a screamer, immediately go ahead and shut him up. Moving on to bigger foes, we have the goon. It's a slow, hard-hitting melee unit. They are way bigger than regular infected, roughly 8 foot tall, and use a armature as its primary melee weapon. Once he smashes his improvised hammer, the goon makes a slight pause which gives you a window to damage him, but be careful as he can execute his second attack that consists of him using his hand in order to hit you and interrupt the flow of your attack. Similarly to other big mutants, the goon's attack deal damage to other enemies, so you can use him to clear big patches of enemies. And just like with the biters, the goons have three different types that change as you progress further in the story. The first types of goons you will encounter will have this technician worker uniform, and they are obviously the weakest. Then once you complete a bit of the story, the goons you will encounter will be wearing a firefighter uniform and a helmet on their head. And finally, the last type of goons will be unlocked once you get to Old Town, and they are the worst looking. As we can see, they have lots of blisters and just look like a real mess even compared to other infected. One very important feature all these types of goons share is that the less health they have, the more frequently they will attack. So it is better to use fast one-handed melee weapons or ranged throwables if you don't want to receive a hit on your head. 
Another boss-like enemy is the Demolisher. This is the first boss you will encounter during the arena mission, and from this point on they will start appearing in the world, but the biggest number of Demolishers can be found in Old Town. The biggest problem with this boss are not his big damage and health values, but the armor you have to break in order to actually deal damage to him. The Demolisher has two main types of attacks. The first one when he charges at the player and the second one is his ranged attack. When he can't reach the player, he will start throwing rocks and even sometimes cars. Now, again just like with a goon, there are two strategies. Either use ranged weapons or you go in melee. If you want to use melee weapons to defeat this boss, you will have to bait out his charge attack and once he runs into a wall, hit his back and after some time the armor on his back will fall off allowing you to do big damage. The second strategy is to get on a high spot and make sure that the rocks he throws at you get destroyed by the obstacle in front of you. From here you will have to shoot his helmet which at first wouldn't do any damage but once the helmet is destroyed and his head is revealed you can kill this boss in a matter of seconds. Also a little interaction that this boss has is that if his helmet is depleted and you make him run into a wall, he will get staggered, giving you more time to attack. The final and most powerful enemy is the Volatile. Not only do they have the biggest amount of health and do the biggest amount of damage, but they are also the most aggressive mutant in the game. Volatiles operate only during night and act like watchers that are trying to find someone who is foolish enough to go outside at night. Once one of the Volatiles or Night Walkers notices the player, a chase will start that has four different stages. With each stage, the number of Volatiles chasing the player will increase. And the best strategy once this happens is to run to the closest safe zone because it will be nearly impossible to defeat all of them. But if you still want to take on this beast, here are some tips that might help you. First and foremost, Volatiles are scaled of UV light because it is lethal to them, so you can use different UV lamps to your advantage while fighting them. It is also very important to know that there are two different types of Volatiles, the second type being called Alpha Volatile. They not only have two times more health than their regular counterparts, and have these bone spikes all over their body, but they can also notice the player even if he's camouflaged, making them an even bigger threat. Also unlike with other enemies, you cannot get to a high spot and shoot them from there because they also have a ranged attack which they execute really really fast and deals a lot of damage. So the best strategy to defeat them will be to either step out of a safe zone, hit them and then immediately back off inside. Or get on a high spot, for example a roof, and then just kick them off the roof, but all of these methods are quite risky and might get you killed, although these are certainly way better than trying to kill volatiles head on. Actually there is another type of zombie which is the bolter. But all you have to know is that he spawns only during night time and instead of attacking just runs away. And once he notices you, he will start a chase. The point of killing them is to get special crafting ingredients that are used in many powerful weapons. But this is still not the end because there are many special types of zombies that are found in the following DLC alongside volatile hives. So write down in the comments if you want to see a video about all of them.